After over 200 hours of hell diving with over 50,000 enemies killed, I think we finally found it. Hello everybody, my name is Marco. In this video, we are going to be playing with what I think is the most effective and efficient loadout post patch 1.0.3. You can think of it as an update to one of my previous loadout videos that got over 100,000 views. Thank you guys by the way for the support. Having people watch something you work hard on really means a lot, especially to small channels and guys like myself who are just starting out. Anyways, we've learned and gained a lot of experience since then. We've also had a lot of helpful people share their loadouts in the comment section which gave me ideas. This video is the culmination of all of that. If you're looking for one of the best loadouts that you can use for both the Terminates and Automatons, kill tons of enemies, complete mission objectives easily, and extract with nothing less than 5 stars, then this is for you. Let's dive right in. Starting with the armor, we'll be using one of the CM Dash line of armors. These are the ones that usually come in white and green color and have the medkit armor passive. The Bone Snapper and the Physician, which are both medium armors, are in the basic Helldivers Mobilized Warbond. The Clinician, which is also a medium armor, can be found at the Superstore along with the CM-17 Butcher, which is a heavy armor, and the CM-21 Trench Paramedic, which is a light armor. As you know, stims not only fully heal your injury and stamina, they also give you an OP regen buff for both HP and stamina for a few seconds. HP-wise, this would practically turn you invincible as long as you're not hit with anything that is one shot kill. If you're sprinting and is running out of stamina, if you have even just a little bit of damage, you can use a stim to keep you going. The medkit armor passive will give us plus 2 max capacity for stims as well as plus 2 seconds for that OP regen buff. For missions that involve a lot of running, I would suggest using the medium or light armor variants, but if you're doing missions with small maps like eradicate or defend, I would go with the heavy armor. To maximize the effect of the medkit armor passive, our default booster will be the health pod space optimization booster. Without it, you'll only be getting 4 stims instead of 6 whenever you get deployed. For our primary and secondary weapons, we'll be using the Eruptor and the Sedator, both of which have very high damage, cause a stagger, and have the medium armor penetration perk. These two weapons work hand in hand and we'll talk more about that in a minute. The Eruptor can be found in the Democratic Detonation Premium Warbond and we'll be using it mainly against medium-sized targets. It performs both like a mid-range shotgun and a long-range sniper rifle, with its scope being able to to zoom in up to 200 meters. It's perfect for taking down hive guards, rude commanders, stalkers, bow spewers, devastators, scout striders, and berserkers. Aside from that, the eruptor will be our main means of closing down bug holes and bot fabricators, as well as cracking open some bug eggs, whether from up close or far away. Based from previous tests, 115 meters is probably the safest range if you're going to snipe an enemy spawner. Shooting them from over 120 meters away doesn't seem to work that well. By default, Fault, you'd want to have the senator on, especially when you're moving around tight spaces. Having a really good reflex when playing FPS games is great, but when you have an explosive weapon like the Eruptor and something jumps in front of you and you shoot it reflexively, you're gonna get in trouble too. The senator is perfect for taking down small and medium sized units, but since it has limited ammo, you'd want to learn how to do melee attacks whenever you can. After patch 1.0.3, the senator finally has that speed loader that we've been asking for. When you use up all your rounds, instead of reloading one bullet at a time like you normally would, you'll reload all six instead. This weapon can be found on page 2 of the Steeled Veterans Premium Warbond. Like what I mentioned earlier, the Eruptor and the Senator work really well together. The Eruptor's aim falls a little behind when turning, which can cause you to miss targets and accidentally hit yourself. What you can do is aim with the Senator and quickly switch the Eruptor. You also have the option to switch between the two weapons to stagger lock an enemy, and in the worst case scenario that your Senator runs out of ammo, you can do the rapid fire trick with the Eruptor. Since we have the Eruptor for our primary, we don't need explosive grenades like HE and Impact to close down enemy spawners, so we're gonna go with a stun grenade. This is very useful when dealing with heavies like Hulks and Chargers that continually rush towards you. It can be found on page 2 of the Cutting Edge Premium Warbond. Moving on to the last two core equipments for this loadout, we have the Guard Dog Rover and the Quasar Cannon. We'll be using the Quasar Cannon to take down heavies that we have stunned with our stun grenade, as well as Bile Titans, tanks, dropships, gunships, and factory striders. Although it got nerfed from the last patch, with its cooldown time between shots increasing to 15 seconds, it's still very, very viable. Just think about it. You can shoot two EATs every 70 seconds, but with a Quasar Cannon, like I said, you can shoot every 15 seconds, which means 5 shots in the time that the EAT has finished its cooldown timer. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'd know that I'm a big fan of the EAT. And the reason for that is simple. With the EAT's low cooldown time, 
time, it won't matter much if you die. Well, that's why we have the medkit armor on. This is going to keep us alive, but we don't have to worry about dropping our quasar cannon. And lastly, Guard Dog Rover will be giving us some extra firepower and protection against enemies that get too close, especially stalkers that just had their camouflage bow. A lot of people have a love-hate relationship with this backpack, but it fits perfectly with our loadout. The Senator, with its limited ammo, cannot deal with a whole bunch of enemies when they come rushing in. And when they are in melee range, you won't be able to shoot with the Eruptor as you will definitely get caught in the explosion. Guard Dog Rover will fill in those gaps where you need to strategically fall back and reload. So quick recap, our core equipment for this loadout is a medkit armor, the Eruptor, Senator, Stun, Quasar Cannon, Guard Dog Rover, and the Hellpod Space Optimization Booster. Now depending on the mission or what you feel like doing when you play, you can change the last two stratagems. If I need to destroy things or feel like having big explosions, I would go with the Orbital Laser and the 500 kg bomb. The 500 kg is perfect for clearing medium-sized outposts and hives, and the Orbital Laser is basically throw it and forget it, being able to clear even an outpost with a command bunker. On the other hand, if I feel like taking down heavies, I usually go with the Orbital Rail Cannon Strike and the Eagle 110 Rocket Pod. The Orbital Rail Cannon Strike can easily one-shot most enemy units and severely damage Bile Titans and Factory Striders. It automatically targets the largest enemy available, and I've yet to see it miss any of the targets I attacked it with. It's pretty much a supersized sniper round from your Super Destroyer. The 110 Rocket Pods also have precision aiming built into them, but not as good as the Orbital Rail Cannons. Just like the Rail Cannon, it auto-targets the largest enemy available, but it does tend to have a hard time hitting fast-moving targets like chargers, so it's a good idea to stun it first and then throw this Eagle Strike. On a side note, this stratagem also goes for Fabricators as it considers them priority targets. You can use the 110 Rocket Pods three times before needing a rearm if you have the Expanded Weapons Bay ship module. And that is it for this video. I hope you guys found it useful. If it is, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're looking for other fun loadouts that you can try, I have more in my channel. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.